Hello, I just want to tell you a little bit about how Progress Theatre, which is a theatre group by and for midwives, came into being. Um, essentially, we were a bunch of disgruntled midwives um, and we all had a theatre background. And it's worth unpacking a little bit about why, where our disgruntlement lay. Um, nobody goes into midwifery to be anything other than compassionate, caring and highly skilled and um, with woman. Um, but the system of maternity care is organised in such a way that often it's hard to maintain that because we tend to be serving the interests of the institution with shift work and shift patterns etc rather than following individual women and, and interestingly there's a new policy document called Better Births which is uh, designed to promote more continuity of care for women because we know it's better for women and we also know it's better for midwives. But for many midwives working in mainstream maternity care, they, it's easy to find yourself a bit alienated from women and indeed from each other. And that inevitably can result in poor behaviour. And that's poor behaviour towards each other, towards ourselves and therefore also to the women that we look after. There are millions of exceptions to this. There are midwives who struggle in very difficult circumstances, long shifts without a break, who perform a brilliant job and are very highly compassionate and highly, highly um, skilled. However, for many of us, that erosion of our sense of what we came into midwifery for is also very potent. So in Progress Theatre, we decided that what we do is use theatre as a way of demonstrating that. And we, we use forum theatre, which is a way of showing people behaviours that are familiar to them and then inviting them to become part of the action and to, to change how they behave. So we're using theatre as a tool to analyse, discuss and potentially change our behaviours. Um, so in a sense, theatre lends itself extremely well to this examination of and unpacking of the minute by minute, breath by breath interactions between us and our colleagues. Um, and so in devising the shows, we tend to reproduce behaviours that are familiar to us and uncannily uh, familiar to our audiences. And very many of them say to us, did you base this on our unit? We didn't, but we based it on our units. And therefore it has a complete kind of realism and a complete um, integrity around how, how we manifest those behaviours. And I'm going to talk in a little while about two particular shows that we've done which explore those two. Um, two. So I just want to tell you about one of the shows uh, that's in rep for uh, Progress Theatre. So as I've explained, we derive our, de derive our material from our own working lives. So unsurprisingly, it resonates strongly with um, our audience. Um, and one particular show where we're demonstrating and offering up for ex for exposition uh, the workplace collusion and bullying that can happen, horizontal bullying, uh, which has been identified as, as quite a, an issue in midwifery. Uh, so it's called At the Desk and it's set um, at the desk, which is a kind of focal point on most labour wards where um, handover happens and rec the women's um, progress in labour is recorded very visibly. So it's quite a kind of strong set, if you like, to use a theatrical um, metaphor. Um, and into this uh, set we have um, the Brenda, who's the bullying sister in charge. She's a very overbearing, very larger than life, lots of comic potential, so we use lots of comedy to make people kind of like loosen up and then uh, we're able to sort of do a more hard, hard hitting uh, an analytical thing, uh, have it having done some humour. Um, and also there's a, a midwife called Sarah who's very happy to just be, have been made core staff on delivery suites. So she's just kind of got, got ingress into the sort of community of practice. Um, and she's very wanting very much to hang on to that. She's supervising a junior member of staff, a newly qualified midwife. And what we see is through her need to kind of be part of the in crowd that she is a bit putty downy of, of the of the new preceptee um, again recognizable behavior um, there's a very much a sort of sense of the insiders and outsiders that we we show uh, in the, in the scene so to to cut a long story scene short, essentially what we do is we offer this up and there's another character called Brian who's the junior doctor and there's a bit of a flirty thing going on between Sarah and Brian, again lots of comic potential. Um, and it's and then at the end of the scene, we ask the audience um, who who they think what they think is going on for each of the characters. We offer them the opportunity to do a thing, an exercise called Stop Think 
where they come up to the character and put their hand on their shoulder, in, the character in freeze frame, and say, um, using the first person, I am feeling like this. And they do that around Brenda, who's often articulating uh, her exasperation at the, at the staff she's got on today, but also a bit of some social isolation herself, really, because she sees the sort of flirty behaviour between the Doctor and Sarah, and she's a bit excluded from that. So um, the audience are invited to kind of empathise with each of the characters. <clears throat> And then we say, OK, the only person you can change in this scene, the only person whose behaviour you can change is, is Sarah's, because we see her as the... She's at the point where she could identify with the newly qualified midwife because she's fairly newly qualified herself, um, but also she's anxious to hang on to her kind of status as a newly, newly uh, accepted member of the, of the tribe. And we say that you can't change anybody else's behaviour, uh, but you can, through Sarah, see if other people's behaviour changes as a result of her changing. Uh, and we then invite the audience kind of into the scene, really. So they then become part of the uh, scene playing Sarah and they can change what Sarah says and does within the realms of reality. So we haven't got a magic wand. Um, but she's still got her insecurities. Um, so there's quite a lot of stuff about kind of what makes people tick that the audience are beginning to debate and analyse. And this, this technique um, of bringing the audience uh, up onto the stage, into the set, if you like, um, is based very strongly on the forum theatre the by the dramaturg um, Augusto Boal. Um, and he coined the phrase spectators. So the spectators who step onto the stage and become part of the action, um, one of the characters, um, are called spectators. And they're in that sort of liminal world between being spectators and being actors. And it's a really interesting space to explore because actually, in a sense, you know, sociologically, we're always performing our roles. Um, but this gives you the chance to kind of perform it a little bit at, at arm's length. And it allows people also insight into what makes people hold on to some of those bad behaviours because we can't suddenly make those pressures uh, disappear. We just have to kind of understand where they come from and understand what might give Sarah uh, the, the strength and insight to be able to act in a more compassionate way. At the end of the scene that we first portray, the outcome for the mother and baby who are invisible um, is poor. There's a sudden kind of deceleration of the fetal heart and everybody has to rush into the room. Um, and one of the outcomes that can happen when Sarah behaves differently is the outcome for the mother and baby is better because she gets more timely care because people are more concentrating on the care that they're giving to the women rather than the sort of professional relationships and the need to maintain that sort of sense of um, being part of the the in crowd um, so it, it frees people up to be more the midwives that they want to be and we know from research that that is what midwives want to be